Would you believe if I told you there are less than 500 of these living dinosaurs left in the wild? I'm lucky enough to own one and I'm going to build a new home for them. Zoom had kindly sent me some amazing giant paludariums and we're going to build one of these for our little buddy. I'm going to start out by including some pipes for an inlet and an outlet. This is where the filtration will run through. Once that is set in place, we're going to add some bark for the background and to keep it all together, we're going to foam it in. Not only will the foam hold the bark to the glass, but it's also going to act as part of the background. See, we're going to cover the foam with silicone and then dirt to make it all look like one natural backdrop. It takes about 24 to 48 hours for the foam to cure, and once it's all dry, it's time to carve it out. Carving it out is key to making it look exactly how I want to make it all go in one smooth shape so it doesn't look so clumpy. Once it's carved, we start siliconing and sanding. The silicone acts as an animal safe glue that the sand can adhere to. This sand slash dirt is going to be covering up the foam so that you can't see the foam of course and it looks really natural. I really like how this turned out. Time to add the logs. Our mini dinosaur will naturally be perching on these in its native range of China and Vietnam. They live over small streams and ponds where sometimes they'll sit for days not moving on perches like these. This is Douglas fir root. I use this a lot in my enclosures. I actually collect it myself, and I think it gives a really natural and gnarly feel, different than a lot of other woods you'll find at your local pet store. It takes me a minute to find exactly the way I want the logs to look because I want them to fit and make it so that the lizard can actually use them correctly. Once they're in the position I like, I foam them in as well. I foam them so that they don't move, and so it looks like they're actually coming out of the side. These are roots after all, so I want it to look like they're coming out of the streamside bank, which is the look I'm going for. Similar to the background, I want to carve it out and silicone and sand the entire thing. This is going to make it all blend into one natural looking feel, and you won't even know that, I mean, of course you'll know that it's not real, it's in a paludarium, but it will look so natural that the goal is, you won't know. We're gonna add some plants. This is a pothos. I decided to go the simpler route. Pothos are very easy to take care of, very hard to kill. And I'm gonna add some rocks to the bottom. I didn't foam the bottom. I figured I'd add rocks because eventually there will be fish swimming in and out of this. They will use this as cover. I can also put some plants in there, aquatic plants. Another pothos, just to add on to the pizzazz. This lizard will hide in there, our mini dinosaur. And then some sand. This sand, of course, makes it look natural and some finer detail rocks. This makes it look really natural. You, you never find just big rocks. You're always gonna find little rocks and these roots. Also our Douglas fir, adding to the effect. Bada bing, bada boom, we are done. Of course, we're gonna add more plants. We're gonna add water. We need to install the Zoomed filtration. This is all for a Chinese crocodile lizard, one of the rarest animals on earth. There are less than 500 of these things in the wild. Luckily, there are more in captivity, captive bred, than in the wild. Come back to see how we finish off this enclosure.